momentous time, I think, for the launch, uh, with three women now joining the Parliament of Papua New Guinea. Um, most recently, of course, was the very exciting news about Julie Soso. Yeah. We've been following her yeah. trajectory for some time. But uh, having a female governor for the first time in Papua New Guinea, and in a very tough province like Eastern Highlands, is extremely uh, a great achievement. And um, I think that it's, it's very auspicious that this is the most women that will ever be in a parliament in Papua New Guinea since independence. Yes. Or in fact, sorry, in the independent history of Papua New Guinea, the most ever before that was of course two way back in the 70s and early 80s with uh, Dame Josephine Abijah and uh, Harun. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So this is a this is a great platform in a way to showcase uh, women as leaders uh, in all sorts of fields. But from the UN perspective, of course, we're very interested in the political field, uh, making sure that the the next Parliament of Papua New Guinea gives a voice to women to air their grievances and their issues about social uh, issues of importance to. 50% of the population that are women, of course, and we feel that that uh, voice has not been heard loud enough in Papua New Guinea and that this is a great opportunity. But it really is through the media that these messages actually get across. So magazines like this are an extremely effective tool. And I would just comment that Jennifer Buying, who, Jennifer Buying who's on the, comma, uh, on the cover, was recently a very active and distinguished participant in the UN's Practice Parliament for Women, which was conducted just before the elections, which brought together 68 women leaders from around Papua New Guinea to have a dialogue on the issues of concern to themselves, but also to give them experience of what it's like to be a parliamentarian, uh, experience with the media, and to give them some, some tips, in a way, about how they can deliver messages to their electorates about uh, the kind of social messaging that they think is important for their electorates. So, uh, when I when I received this invitation just on a Monday, I think we thought Carol and myself. And Carol, is, let me introduce Carol Floor. She's the deputy at uh, UNDP here in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Carol and I said we must come because this is a really good, as I said, vehicle and platform for these kind of messages. And you already have a an aspiring political figure on your cover. And I just had a, 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 an opportunity to quickly flick through, and I see that. Um, it covers a, a broad gamut of, of, of important issues, uh, culture, art, politics, uh, all of the things that we think are important uh, in the PNG context. I just have a couple of comments, if I may, if you give me two minutes more. Um, apart from the fact that we're all delighted that there are more women in Parliament, <clears throat> the Pacific is still, unfortunately, the worst performing region in the world in terms of female representation. Uh, if you look at the parliaments all the way from Polynesia right across to, to, to Asia. If you look at the actual proportion of representation of females, it's still the lowest in the world. And so there's a lot of work to be done. But PNG is actually starting to lead the way, particularly in the Pacific context where women are very much underrepresented. Um, but I think what we would like to see is that um, the UN itself would like to continue this association with young women leaders like yourselves and the women who are here in order to, to keep the momentum going. Next year, of course, is the local level government elections. Um, and it's very important, I think, that, that we also try to work with women leaders to promote their entry into politics at the grassroots level as well. Because then if you establish uh, a carter of women who are experienced in government, then that will, I think, naturally create a momentum of women to aspire to provincial level government and then onto national level politics. Um, but just to say that what we're seeing, I think, is a change in the mind shift, and the media has a terribly important role to play in this. Where men feel confident to vote for women based on their merit and their talent, and what they see as women being inherently important as leaders. And we're changing that, and I think that that mindset is something that the UN will stay engaged with, but also with our development partners in Papua New Guinea, to work with women at grassroots, and to change the mindset of men to recognize that women are as an effective leader, if not more effective than their male counterparts. And so we'll be doing this at all levels. It's a big part of our, our platform here, working in Papua New Guinea. And uh, we call it the gender journey, but we sort of, we feel that just in the last couple of days, there's been a momentous change uh, in working uh, along that road to ensuring better gender equality. So congratulations to the, the editors, to the people, I'm not sure I, I'm recognizing everybody who are the, the brains behind this magazine, 
But Papua New Guinea needed a magazine like this. And as I said, uh, we look forward to, um, to perhaps even participating if we can with articles that are inspirational, that tell stories about women leaders and, and get their story across through, through people. But really, well done, congratulations. And thanks for the invitation to the UN to come and speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.